And now, HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. Presentation of HBO Sports. One of these two future Hall of Fame fighters is about to score the biggest win of his career. Miguel Cotto now moves up once again, chasing a dream to become the first Puerto Rican fighter in history to win titles in four separate weight classes. Martinez badly hurt Jim with a left hook. Down goes Martinez. Cotto's off to a blazing start. Three knockdowns in the first round already for Miguel Cotto. How about Cotto's power carrying it up to middleweight like this? Everything is landing for Miguel. I told you he's picking on all cylinders tonight. Martinez is going to retire. Miguel Cotto establishes that there's a new sheriff in the middleweight division. One year after his overwhelming victory over Sergio Martinez, Miguel Cotto returns to New York as the legitimate middleweight champion of the world. Other big names are looming, looking to seize control of the division. Miguel Cotto awaiting a chance to cement his place at the top. First, he'll face former title holder Daniel Gill. The Australian has come up short in two fights in the United States. But tonight, with the biggest opportunity of his career in front of him, can Giel put a quick end to Cotto's middleweight reign? From the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, the lineal middleweight championship on the line. Miguel Cotto versus Daniel Giel, next. Center in Brooklyn for our next edition of World Championship Boxing. Tonight, all eyes are on middleweight champ Miguel Cotto. One year after his dismantling of legitimate champ Sergio Martinez, tonight Cotto goes for a third consecutive impressive performance with new trainer Freddie Roach in hopes that perhaps later this year a super fight can emerge with Canelo Alvarez. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley, and welcome to this one fight only World Championship Boxing Edition on what is already a special Triple Crown Celebration Day here in New York City. The excitement of what happened at Belmont this afternoon spilling over tonight into Barclays Center as a lively crowd has assembled here to watch Miguel Cotto defend the lineal middleweight championship of the world against Daniel Gill. The great Miguel Cotto, headed for the Hall of Fame after his retirement, is probably in the late stages of his career. But there's a lot on his plate as he calculates very carefully now how to set himself and his family up for life. I spoke to him about all of the issues he's dealing with earlier this week. Way back when we first met, 13 or 14 years ago, I remember you explained to me how important parenting was to you. How challenging has it been for you to be exactly the family man that you wanted to be? He came from, from a house where my dad, he did everything he could do he could for, for us. I learned from him that family is everything in life. His love always was the first thing on his mind. Everything he did in his life was for us. I remember when your father died and how deeply affected you were by that. How has that affected your role in the family? You can find different ways to express love in life. I have young adult kids right now. I didn't be there for them in special dates, like graduations, like birthdays, only because I need to be here working. The only thing I, uh, I want in life is 
in, in the future they can realize I didn't be there with them because I was working for them. How confident were you on the night of June 7 last year that you were about to do something very special? The, the words coming out from Freddy was just go, enjoy, and be relaxed all the time. The night of June 7 last year, we did what people doesn't expect from us. You looked so great that night. People were anxious to see you back in the ring. Why did a whole year go by without you taking a fight? In the months after the fight, uh, no big names comes through us. We prefer to, to, to spend time with my family. It seems clear that you could have, if you had wanted to, you could have made a date to fight Canelo Alvarez this spring. You could have already fought him by now. Most reporters came to the conclusion that you were not happy with the monetary terms and ultimately wanted to get more money for the fight. Is that accurate? It's, it's not just the money. I've been here for 14 years, killing my ass every day. And I didn't ask for things that I didn't earn in my career. I want to feel respect. I know the whole, the whole cake is not for me. I know we have to divide it. That's what I want, a fair business to everybody. The whole world believes that there's an agreement in principle for you to fight Canelo next if you win Saturday night. At what weight would a fight with Canelo take place? Depends on the opportunities we had after, the, after, after this fight. What kinds of incentives would have to be provided for you to consider fighting Golovkin? Does that have to be a pay-per-view fight for you to take it? Golovkin make people talk, make people excited about boxing. We can think in this possibility. Could be Golovkin, could be Canelo. After this fight, I'm just, we're just going to sit. We're going to have a decision. Thank you very much, Miguel. Thank you. And back live at ringside with world championship boxing expert Roy Jones. Roy, a couple of years ago, when Miguel Cotto had lost consecutive fights to Floyd Mayweather and Austin Trout, we were not certain we would see him at this level of the sport again. Since then, considerable rejuvenation, an opportunistic move, opportunistic move, I should say, up to a different weight class, middleweight. How do you see Miguel as a fighter right now? Well, I see Miguel as a very interesting fighter right now, mainly because of the job that Freddie Roach has done with him. Freddie has somewhat reemerged his career, brought him back to doing the things that we learned to love from Miguel Cotto early in his career. With that being said, Freddie makes Miguel Cotto an interesting name in any uh, opponent or any fight right now. So if you call the big fights of the world out, Miguel Cotto sounds really good against those big named opponents. So he dealt with the possibility of fighting Canelo this spring, ultimately bypassed that, took his time before choosing as a middleweight title defense opponent, Daniel Giel, who was crushed by Gennady Golovkin last summer. Golovkin is here in the house tonight. Daniel Giel may have once owned a slice of the middleweight title, but nothing adequately prepared him for what happened on July 2014, July 26, at Madison Square Garden when he faced Triple G. Here's how Giel feels about it now. I was confident going into the, the Golovkin fight. I definitely knew what I was up against. You know, he is something a little bit different. He can punch, he can move, he can box, he can defend. He can take a punch as well. He can basically do whatever he wants to do. Down goes Giel again on a brilliant right hand. I got caught. That's that's basically it. That's what you get sometimes. You get caught sometimes, and uh, you got to pick yourself back up and, and keep fighting. It's not too discouraging, to be honest. You know, I'm fighting a guy like Golovkin, who, in my mind, is, is the number one middleweight at the moment. It does give me confidence, you know, stepping in with, with anybody else. I know what I'm up against with Kodo. It doesn't bother me when people are talking about who Kodo's going to be fighting next. It makes me want to stuff their plans up, because, <laughs> because I know that they overlook me all the time. Nobody thinks the little Aussie kid's going to be able to do anything, but you know what? I'm, I'm ready to fight. You know, I've got to go out there and prove that I'm, I'm the big middleweight. I'm, I'm the stronger guy. You know, normally 160 is you know, what I weigh in at. That catch weight is at 157, so he's definitely trying to put me at a disadvantage. They're making me come down a little bit extra to try and weaken me a little bit so Kodo can come in and just blast me out of there. And uh, you know, I'm not going to let that happen. I didn't come over here for a holiday. I come over here to fight. Back live at ringside with HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. Max, Daniel Giel is a slightly larger man naturally than Sergio Martinez. 
significant because that means that Gil will be the largest man, naturally, that Miguel Cotto has ever been in the ring with. And uh, apropos of that, looking toward that, Cotto used his leverage, his bargaining power, to make Gil come down to 157 pounds for the weigh-in yesterday. Now, let's take a look at how Gil looked at that weigh-in. It was the opinion of many experts that he looked like death. What did you think? Yeah, he looked extremely drawn, but he was a fighter looking to, to make weight that he's not used to making. To his credit, not only did he make the weight, which was difficult for him, but apparently he was right in that range for the, the last couple of days, which says good things about his preparation. At the end of the day, Cotto knew doggone good and well that if he chose to fight Gil, he was going to hear a lot of questions about Gennady Golovkin. He has deflected them as best he can. Why in the world did he choose to defend against Gil? It's strange because what's the upside here for Miguel Cotto if he beats Gil after Golovkin just destroyed him? Hard to imagine that he could be more spectacular in beating Gil than Golovkin was. The, the short answer is he's fighting Gil Cotto is because it's a payday, because Gil was the most legitimate name he could find who would come and meet him at 157 pounds for the money offered. Cotto's obviously taking the lion's share and then some of the money available. But something about Freddie's work with Cotto, you see the rejuvenation of his career that you and Roy discussed, Jim. Delvin Rodriguez at a certain level, but Cotto looked great. Sergio Martinez, as it turns out, maybe literally at the end of his career, but Cotto looked great. And again, Gil tonight, people will say, well, he had to melt down should Cotto look spectacular. And yet what Freddie and Miguel know is that those kind of details tend to get lost, and what remains is the feeling of excitement that people get watching a fighter score devastating win after devastating win, and that should serve Cotto well should he win, especially in impressive fashion, heading into a fight with Canelo Alvarez. And now, just to extend this discussion a little further, the plot thickens, or maybe I should say it thins out, as we go to the tail of the tape. And we're going to see on the tail of the tape that Miguel Cotto and Daniel Gill are equal in age at 34, although Cotto has had nine more fights than has Gill and has fought more rounds in the ring. There's a two-inch height advantage for Gill. There's a one-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Cotto weighed in at 153.6, below the junior middleweight limit. Gill, as you saw, made 157. But overnight, he has rehydrated dramatically. And when we weighed him unofficially earlier this evening, with street clothes on, Roy Jones, he weighed 182 pounds. Now, we can guesstimate that that probably means about 175 in boxing gear. Given what Cotto was at 153.6, do you think that Gil may have a 15-pound working weight advantage against Cotto in the ring tonight? Yes, I think he will have at least a 15-pound working uh, weight advantage, but that will only come into play if he is a real puncher. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started! Coming to the ring at this time, here is the challenger from the land down under, please welcome Daniel Real Deal Gill. This is Daniel Gill's third appearance in the United States. He's looking for his first win in the United States. The first loss in Atlantic City two summers ago was against Englishman Darren Barker in a very close fight that could have gone either way. Then, as you know, last July 26 in Madison Square Garden, annihilated by Triple G. No embarrassment, really, in that because virtually every opponent gets annihilated by Triple G. Roy Jones said the weight advantage means something, Max, if he's a very big puncher. He's not, right? No, he's not a very big puncher. He's not even as active a fighter as he used to be. Before the, the, the uh, Golovkin fight, he was perceived, I think correctly, as a top five-ish middleweight, and I don't know that that's the case anymore. On the other hand, Roy, he's athletic, and when he fights at a fast pace, he can be very tough to handle. Yeah, if he gets into the late rounds, the extra weight may allow him to absorb more punishment from Cotto, and therefore, if he can be aggressive enough, he could etch out a decision, possibly. Now, coming to the ring, the defending world champion, 
Und Carlos Puerto Rico. Miguel Angel Coro. His hometown is Caguas, Puerto Rico, but his home court as a boxer is New York City. Max Gellerman, he's won 10 of his 11 fights here in New York City, and though there may not be as heavy a representation of Puerto Rican fans here in Brooklyn, as is the case normally across the river in Manhattan, this is obviously a Miguel Cotto crowd. It's not just that he's fought so many times, or even high-profile fights in New York. It's the kind of fights he's had against Pauli Malinaji, against Zab Judah. These exciting, action-packed wins against top fighters, New York fighters, that people have been talking about and will be talking about for years. And Roy, just as was the case against Martinez last year, no walk-in music, all business. All business, all business, all business. This is what has allowed him to be able to be in the position that he's in today because he's all business. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen from Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York, USA, welcome to the official kickoff event of National Puerto Rico Day Parade Week 2015. As Rock Nation and Koto Promotions, in association with Gary Shaw Productions, is proud to present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC. Middleweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character, Jaber, Tap Out, Tequila Cazadores, Venue Kings, New Resource, and Geico. This contest is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. Chairperson Melvina Lathan, Executive Director David Berlin, and the World Boxing Council President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Jill Diamond. The three judges at ringside scoring, should this contest go the distance, will be Stanley Christodoulou, Anik Hong Tong Khan, and Steve Weisfeld. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee in charge. World Championship veteran Harvey Dock. And now the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. Boxing fans, Aussies, Boricuas, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. Fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Graham Shaw, wearing blue with red and white. Official weight, 157 pounds. As a professional, his record stands at 31 victories, including 16 wins by knockout with three defeats. From Harrington Park, New South Wales, Australia, the challenger, former IBF and WBA world middleweight champion, Daniel. Real deal. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the black corner with his trainer, Freddy Roach. Wearing teal with pink trim, he officially weighed in at 153 and one half pounds. His professional record, 39 victories, including 32 wins by knockout against four defeats, and he has won titles in four different weight divisions. Thomas de Caballeros de Agua Puerto Rico, the five-time world champion, the reigning, defending WBC middleweight champion of the world, Miguel Angel.
guys went over instructions already. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Miguel Cotto told us yesterday that the love for boxing has come back to him since he's been with Freddie Roach. When his eyes open in the morning, he has the thought, the harder I work, the better the future, the immediate future should he win this fight is Canelo Alvarez. And as you heard Daniel Gill say, he's going to try to spoil those plans. Alvarez looked sensational just a few weeks ago against James Kirkland. So there's a prelude to what takes place tonight. Some fans will be looking to see. Does Cotto answer back to Canelo with something equally as impressive as what Canelo was able to do against Kirkland? First punch of the fight is a hard Miguel Cotto left hook to the body, and that is his trademark shot. A very good left hook to the body at that, Jim. That's sort of like Miguel saying hello to an opponent. Well, he, he had, in the ring with Miguel Cotto. Well, he had to say hello early because this is a much bigger opponent. He came in weighing at the junior middleweight division, so he has to do something to let this bigger guy know that he must be where. We told, like you, that. About, uh, we told you about the unofficial weight for Gil and how much he was able to rehydrate overnight. We do not have an unofficial weight on Miguel Cotto. He has not been weighed other than at the weigh-in yesterday, 153.6, but a reasonable expectation is that he would have rehydrated maybe up to 160, probably not beyond. Yeah, I don't know if it's obvious on television. Um, we have monitors here, and it doesn't look as obvious on TV as live here. But Daniel Gill's size advantage is pronounced. I know Miguel Cotto's obviously the stockier guy, but Gill is a much bigger guy, it looks like here. Yeah, it does, but Miguel Cotto also hurt Daniel Gill with that last body shot he hit him with. If you watch it, you saw that arm snatch back really, really quickly. Shows you that he has that respect already. There's a left hook to the head by Cotto. Perfect short, tight shot inside that landed and also seemed to bother Daniel Gill. I thought Cotto made his presence known with the very first punch of the fight that left hook to the body. And he's also boxed pretty well here. Cotto moving well on his feet. Lands another left hook. And Daniel Gill isn't going to be able to stop Miguel Cotto from landing left hooks. He will not have a chance to win the fight. No, but he just landed a pretty good left hook of his own. Cotto's ability to carry his punch up with him in weight has been impressive, both against Sergio Martinez and you've seen some hard shots here tonight so far. Well, that's the one thing about a good puncher in professional boxing. If you can punch, you pretty much can punch at any weight class. Cotto landed another left hook inside. Gill's going to have to find a way to try to stop or elude Cotto's left hook. He's getting hit with too many of them here in the first round. Getting outboxed from the outside by the shorter fighter is not a good look for Gill early. Gill with a three punch combination, but the punches were glancing blows. Didn't land solidly. And those body shots are already making Gill keep his hands at home more than he really wants to because he can't afford to give up the left hook to the body. And Cotto, as Gill favors his body trying to stop that left hook downstairs, Cotto's landing jabs upstairs. And Cotto also knows that he can swap a left hook for anything that Gill throws. Do not let him come to you, okay? Do, okay. do not let him get off first, okay? All right, yeah, that's the key, okay? Don't give him any momentum at all, all right? All right. Keep in charge, the behind the jab, all right, body, head, good combinations, all right, and beautiful combinations, body, and back to head, all right? Here's where you know a punch has a good effect on your opponent. When you see this body shot land, you watch that right elbow snatch back just a second too late, though. The punch already did its damage, but you know it did damage because you saw that arm try to get back and block that spot. Both fighters landed, or excuse me, both fighters threw 41 punches by CompuBox count in round one. Cotto landed 14, Gill landed nine. Unofficial CompuBox numbers in the first round. You see the brilliance of Freddie Roach in the corner. Cotto had success boxing, but just because he can box doesn't mean he should. Freddie wants to see an aggressive in-charge 
Miguel Cotto coming forward. Doesn't want to let uh, uh, Gill get into the fight. That left hook hurt Gill. Gill landed a good right hand, but Cotto hurt him back with the left hook. And Freddie's doing a very smart job of that because you never let the guy get momentum, especially when he already has a size advantage on your fighter. Cotto has a good left hook upstairs, always has. Has a good left hand, period. And but there's the left, great left hook to the body right there. His body punch, his left hook to the body, has always been, when he's thrown it, one of the three or four most devastating weapons in boxing, in my opinion. But for three or four years, in the middle of his career, Roy Jones, that left hook seemed to disappear. What happened, and how did it come back? Well, he wasn't really setting it up. Guys were preparing for it, so he wouldn't throw it as much. When guys started looking for a punch, he seemed to not throw it as often. Freddie Roach came and said, look, if you're going to be the best Miguel Cotto, you have to use your best weapons, which are your left hook to the head and your left hook to the body. So he, he brought it Gilles, back. And he stopped Gill's momentum there with a the jab. While Roy was speaking early in that sequence, you saw Cotto land another left hook to the body. So the money punch is back in a very big way for Miguel Cotto, as it was against Sergio Martinez, as it was against Delvin Rodriguez. That was obviously priority one for Freddie Roach to put the left hook back into the arsenal. Gill touches the canvas with a glove, and referee Harvey Dock rules it not a knockdown. So far, what we're seeing is two different classes of fighter. Gill's a good fighter, always been a good fighter. But Cotto is of a certain class of fighter where he's been able, as Roy said, not only to carry his punch up, but success up with him from 140 to 47 to 54 to the middleweight division. Well, if you're looking for Gill's deficiency coming in, it's difficult to define other than that there's no X factor. There's just no weapon for Daniel Gill, which can change a fight the way Cotto can change it with his left hook. Well, his size may change it, Jim. You gotta be careful here because he's doing a good job of moving around. Uh, now he's avoiding the left hook better. He's big enough to absorb some of this punishment and last for a little while. He's naturally a very tough character. So if Cotto does not go ahead and discourage him and lets him get into this fight, we could see a change here. How should Gill move to try to blunt Cotto's left hook? He has to move to the right to stay away, I mean to the left to stay away from it, to a corner. Right then he moved to the right and ran right into it. This Tuesday, join me for a one-of-a-kind look at boxing's biggest stories and issues on our next installment of The Fight Game. Next Saturday, 126-pound title holder Nicholas Walters is back against Miguel Mariaga, who beat him twice in the amateurs. Also that night, the HBO debut of elite prospect Felix Verdejo, who matches up with Ivan Nahara. And there it is, Triple G at ringside. The crowd erupted about 30 minutes ago when he entered the ring and caused a stir. And now the crowd erupts again as Triple G's picture appears on the screen above the ring. Good head move, okay? I'm gonna land a decent hook or a right hand here. Just, just turn it slightly. Copy box numbers in round two. Cotto 18 out of 54. Gill 8 out of 37. So logic tells you that Miguel Cotto probably has already put the first two rounds in the book. Cotto's doing a real good job, I think, tonight. Blocking with his shoulders, Roy slipping punches with very little extra movement. He's showing a lot of defensive uh, moves. Uh, great left and right shots to the body, but he's very defensive. He stays low when he punches. That's always a great thing. Good jab by oh. Cotto. Let's not forget that Cotto jab that lands like a power punch because he's naturally left-handed. And that was the weapon that he used to neutralize the speed of Shane Mosley back in the day. Maybe Cotto's greatest performance, a decision win over Mosley across the river in Manhattan. When Mosley was still more or less in his prime. On a night when CompuBox counted the two fighters landing an identical number of punches over a 12-round fight. Could have gone either way, but, you know, no one was going to have a cakewalk with that Shane Mosley. 
Well, I thought Cotto landed the more telling punches is why I thought they gave it to him. But Shane was a very tough competitor at that time. I believe the judges agreed with you on that, Roy. I believe he did get the decision by landing harder, more solid blows down the stretch of the fight. Turned boxer late in that fight, but Freddie wants, especially the last two rounds, Freddie wants him to go back to aggressive fighter throwing that hook to the body and he by and large has been doing it tonight although there have been plenty of stretches like this where he shows off his boxing skills again the left hook to the body again Gill moves away after the punch but Gill has not proven yet that he really can hurt Cotto with one punch so Cotto can do what he wants to do right now he's still in a very Comfortable envelope as he proceeds in this fight. Hmm. Hard left hook to the body by Cotto. He'll continuing to move to the right from time to time and put himself in a position for Cotto to land that left hand shot. And he constantly lands it to the head and to the body. It's just the amount of work he now puts into the body. Precise body shots. He's putting the money in the bank from round one. And so those shots have a cumulative effect because it's 10, 12 shots hard with both hands to the body every round. Left and right hand, like you said, Max, he just ran into a good overhand right right there, though. That's been Gil's best punch so far, is that, strip, that right hand. Moments ago, you saw the CompuBox number on the fly at the bottom of the screen, demonstrating that Cotto has now doubled Gil in terms of landed punch. Now it's Gil back into the ropes for the right hand. Fires the left hook to the body again. Melissa Cotto at ringside, along with the rest of the Cotto family. Nice round, okay? Nice combinations again. All right, but now having the combinations, let's not get lazy and stand in front of them. All right? All right? My head movement all the time, defense, all right? Good head, good head, good head movement, all right? Nice and loose, all right? You need more punches, you know what I mean? You just too many single punches. You're listening intently to trainer Graham Shaw. Graham Shaw, I think, trying to relax Gil, speaking in a measured tone. You can win this thing. Hasn't seemed to be in position to win a round so far. Harold, how do you have it through three? I agree with you, Jim. Three to nothing. 30 to 27, Miguel Cotto. You know, Jim, I love the way Miguel Cotto circles and sets up that left hook. I, I mean, we see the left hook. We're talking about the left hooks. Let's talk about the way he moves. I mean, he's using that ring beautifully. Circles to the left. Doesn't go back to the right too often, but he circles to the left, sets it up, then he moves inside, and bam, he throws that left hook. Really using the ring oh. nicely. There it is. Down goes Gill on a solid left hand shot. <laughs> that was just a beautiful landed left hook, Jim. Just sensational. Low to the body like he's doing right now and came back up to the head with a beautiful left hook. Good body shot. The referee is looking to stop it now. Watching him gently, and now Gio tries to fight his way out of it and goes down for a second time. Three, that time on a counter four, right hand. Five, Listen to this crowd. Six. For the second year in a row, Daniel Gio tells a New York referee he's had enough in the ring. And Miguel Cotto has a fourth round knockout victory. None of these people are thinking about a catch weight, 157 pounds. All they can see, all they can think about is a devastating Miguel Cotto performance where he boxed beautifully throughout and then when he needed to through the left hook like Joe Frazier. A sensational performance by Miguel Cotto, his third consecutive sensational performance 
under the care of Freddie Roach. And what a marriage this relationship between Cotto and Roach is turning out to be. Has been the best, absolute best move that Cotto has ever made in his entire professional career. And now let's go to the replays, Roy, and take a look at how Cotto closed the show. Well, here you see he's on the attack. He goes low with the right hand and comes following up with the left hook right on the button. If he hits anybody with a hook that clean, they're bound to go down. This is not a wrap, but if he hits you with a hook that clean, you're bound to go down. That is his money punch right on the button. And one of the great money punches in boxing. I mean, if you were to list the five biggest weapons in boxing, Miguel Cotto's left hook has to be on that list. Yes, it does. It has to be on the list. Came back doing great body work here. Another good left hook to the head that he missed. But what's most impressive to me is that he also got a knockdown or scored a knockdown with the right hand during this time. Well, this is when Gil decided he had to fight back. And, and there's the right he hand did, right there. Cotto landed that counter right amid a Gil combination and boom. That shows you a whole lot about Cotto. Shows you punching power in both hands. And that's a devastating thing to see in any good or great world champion. A tremendous fourth round knockout performance by Miguel Cotto. And there's the family celebrating in the front row at ringside. Miguel's mother reaching out to his brother Jose. And there's the celebration by Cotto. Rings, ring announcer Michael Buffer stands by with the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Harvey Dock has to step in following the second knockdown in round number four. The end comes at one minute, 28 seconds of that round. The winner by TKO victory, victory number 40, knockout number 33, still the WBC middleweight. Champion of the world, Stefano was Puerto Rico. Miguel Angel. A huge smile on the face of Melissa Cotto, and one of the bigger smiles that you'll ever see on the normally taciturn face of Miguel Cotto. Final CompuBox numbers, and this was statistically a wipeout, as you're going to see. Cotto landing twice as many punches as Gale. Landing at a 37% overall rate, throwing 56 more punches than Gale in a little bit less than four rounds. Power shots, and Cotto landing only 39% of the power shots. Might have looked for a little bit higher percentage there, but when he got his left hook in gear and landed it, in each of the four rounds, he hurt Giel every single time he touched him with the left hand. And CompuBox Punch Zone now shows us where the punch has landed. And you can look over to the Daniel Giel side and see the 36 punches to the head, 19 of them on the right side of Giel's head. That's where the left jab and the left hook land. 18 punches to the right side of Giel's body. That's where the left hook to the liver lands. That's how Cotto devastated a much larger opponent. And now let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with Miguel. Congratulations, Miguel, on yet another sensational knockout performance. Seems like ever since you hooked up with Freddie Roach, the old Miguel Cotto is back. What is it like to score a knockout like that in New York City where you've scored so many memorable wins? You know, being, being, being here after... Ten hard weeks in LA, training with Freddie, and perform like that just make me feel like the Miguel from the 2000s, you know, 2010, 2000, 2004, and and I feel good, you know. I said Freddie a couple of minutes ago, he is the best thing who ever happened to my to my career, and it is. He is the best thing ever happened to my career. What is it about Freddie that's enabled you to rediscover this fighter, this guy who comes in and destroys opponents with left hooks to the body. Freddy is a humble, simple guy who always came with uh, his best, trying to get the best from you. 
and having that from him just made me be better every day. Miguel, we all know you're able to box and you were boxing very well in the first round, but when you got back to the corner, Freddie seemed to want to see some more aggression from you. What were you thinking at the end of that first round? I, I just started to, uh, start to establish my own path to fighting and I think we did it, we did it well, but Freddie just pulled me to get more and more. That, that's, that's his style and that's what, what I like about him. Were you trying to set him up with the left hook upstairs? Because you went from boxing very smartly to looking like Joe Frazier with that left hook on the top. I just, I just tried to, to do my best. I, I caught him. I caught him with, with a, a, a really hard left hook, and I just wanted to repeat it again. We'll show it to you. Here's the first one in the fourth round. You tell us what you see. It was just moving to my left, and he just pulled, pulled his right hand down, and that was the perfect movement for my left. How have you been able to carry the punching power up to middleweight? You have an opponent tonight who weighed in over 180 pounds in street clothes by the time he stepped in the ring tonight. Why do you think you've been able to carry your power up? The way, the way, the smart way we, we've been doing, working for my last three fights in L.A., with Gavin McMillan, with Freddie Roach, just make, make me feel like never before, you know? Make me want and ask for me for more every day and every day. That, that's, that's the explanation. So now it looks like in your immediate future, you haven't admitted it, but it seems like the, the worst kept secret in boxing, that Cotto and Canelo will happen before too long. What do you feel about a fight with Canelo Alvarez? I had 44 fights in my whole career. Canelo going to be just another one, another uh, the, 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 the new chapter in my career. But first of all, and before uh, Canelo's fight happened, if people want to fight, I want to fight, everybody want to fight, let's do it. But before that, I want to spend time with my family and want to, to enjoy time with them. And then after that, we'll be back in LA training for Canelo. And this might be in the not as immediate future, but Gennady Golovkin is sitting here ringside and you just fought a guy who he knocked out recently and you look just as good knocking the same fighter out. Do you have interest in that fight? Uh, uh, why not? You know, but uh, we, we need to do our, our fights. Canelo uh, sounds to be the next one. And after that, if, if Ginali is available and he, if he wants to fight, I'm available too. Lastly, you fought Sergio at 159 pounds, this at 157. Canelo would seem to be somewhere south of that. Are you a middleweight? Do you, do you consider yourself a middleweight? My weight uh, yesterday was 153.6 uh, pounds. Do you think I'm a middleweight? Doesn't sound like it. I'm not. Thank you and congratulations, Miguel, on a spectacular performance. It's great to have you back. This is the Miguel Cotto we remember. It's all about Fred Roach. Jim? Well, it's certainly partially about Freddie Roach, but it's also about the very great Miguel Cotto. And Roy Jones, talk about setting up a big fight. On May 9, Canelo Alvarez could not have looked more sensational beating down James Kirkland for a three-round knockout. Tonight, Miguel Cotto couldn't have looked more sensational, knocking out Daniel Gill. The fight world is going to be desperately hungry for Canelo versus Cotto this fall. And the good thing about it is they don't have to worry about it being a dud. They don't have to worry about something happening that they're not used to seeing. They can expect exactly what they just saw tonight and what they saw on May 9th. You can expect these two guys to bring all the fireworks to the party. No better rivals than Mexicans versus Puerto Rican, especially when you got two big time punches in the game. It'll be a historic event. It could in fact turn out to be an epic fight. Let's get a final word from Max Kellerman. Max, he says, I'm not a middleweight. He's not required to be a middleweight to be sensational against middleweights. He's done that twice in a row. Roy, and you were right, of course, we all know Canelo Cotto is dud free. 
That's not Mayweather Pacquiao. It's a dud for that. That's going to be a sensational fight. But just a thought about Miguel Cotto. Forget about where he is. Fighting at middleweight, 157, a catch weight, whatever. He was such a tremendous fighter coming up. And somewhere along the way, he lost his way. Maybe it was the result of what many feel was Margarito cheating him out of his rightful destiny as a fighter. But whatever the case may be, since he's linked up with Freddie Roach, he seems to have rediscovered that greatness. Didn't have to work this way, people. We never had to see that again, the great Miguel Cotto. But we have it again, and we should appreciate it while it's here, because it really is fun to see. All right, fantastic stuff. So now, while a huge percentage of you prepare to rewind the DVR and watch this again and maybe again overnight, we look down the road to further action on HBO. Mark your calendars for our summer boxing programming in the weeks ahead, including the fight game Tuesday night and some of our favorite fighters such as Nicholas Walters, Felix Verdejo, Tim Bradley, and the crusher, Sergey Kovalev. And remember, next on HBO, Ronda Rousey on Real Sports. And so for everyone here in Brooklyn, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long and see you next week from just six miles away at the theater in Madison Square Garden.